to come up the front. Um, we actually interviewed Bev last week, and and uh, because of my confusion, we missed out on Bev in the first service. Uh, but I thought it'd be really good to hear from Bev. Do you want to um, grab that microphone? That and feel free to take your mask off so we can see your beautiful face and hopefully might hear you a little bit better as well. I'll just um, relocate myself. Um, just before Christmas, uh, we'd learnt that um, Bev had a really great idea for her area. And I, and I loved it when I heard it at the time. I thought it'd be really nice to get some feedback about how the idea unfolded and what came out of it and uh, that it might encourage all of us as we think about uh, all the tables of the kingdom and the different ways that tables in many different places, hospitality becomes the new beginning for what God might actually do, sometimes in a seed form. So Bev, do you want to tell us a bit about the, the wild idea you had and then what happened with it? Uh, good morning. Yes, I've made it this time. Um, we understand what oh, we need. Sorry about that. Um, there's been a lot of things going on and I live on my own and I wave to my neighbours and I got a little bit sick of waving to my neighbours uh, and with the, with the virus um, I realised the doors were shutting a little more, a little more and one day here we were talking about connecting and, and um, sharing and I just thought you know what, let's do a little get-together for our street. And I talked to my neighbours, because I live in a unit where there's three in the block. I said, do you mind if we use the driveway and invite our neighbours around? It's only one half of our street, because it's a fairly long street. Um, it is. And so you can, yeah. not knowing how many would come or whether anybody else would come. Um, I asked my daughter, because I'm not very creative, uh, to make a little leaflet. And so the little leaflet was just a little handout like this and it just basically said where it was and to come if you could and to bring some share food from four o'clock on and it would be in the driveway just mm. so people felt comfortable it wasn't in a home. Yep. Yep. To me that was sort of important that if you're opening up for new people they don't want to come into your house quite often. <laughs> um, sure. So we organised our tables down the middle of the driveway and these went out and I waited patiently thinking, Lord, is anybody <laughs> else coming? Another day on uh, my own. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, this, this could be really a bit of a fizz because yeah. I didn't ask for a reply because there was no need for a reply. Um, so that's why we're a bit sort of like that. But in the meantime, just to keep you in touch with it a little more, I decided, well, there's about nine children in the section that we're in. If they all come... Ooh, that could be a bit disruptive in the small driveway. Uh, I was talking about it at the op shop and uh, somebody said, oh, you know, why don't you gather up a few bits and pieces? And I said, yes, I could make up some little gifts for the children mm. and that might be a, another little blessing for the families because we've got mm. single mothers on one side and people who are, aren't doing so badly on the other and some new neighbours from overseas and whatever. So... Um, I, I did that and then I went down to the local shop and I got some chalk. That might have been a bad idea. <laughs> I got four of those in the bag and, and I got some little um, stickers and uh, some balloons and I made up little bags like this and I thought I'll hide them in the garden and the children can get away from the family. They can keep talking mm -hmm. and interacting and I'll hide them in the garden and I'll get the kids away for a while. I, I'm not a grandma, you know. So <laughs> You can tell, otherwise you might... <laughs> anyway, so I made my little bags up and I hid them in the garden and then I made up um, any age group that I knew was possible to come and I wrapped up little presents from the age of two to 12. So I said, once you find your little bag and you all help each other find the bag, again, they had to help because the little two-year-olds going, I haven't got a bag! <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, there's somebody that can help you, I'm sure. So I didn't help, I just thought they can help each other. And um, so anyway, yes, we had these little parcels and, of course, then they started drawing all over the drive, which I had to clean off, mind you, yeah, a couple of days later, it wasn't yeah, coming off. <laughs> anyway, my neighbours were happy. So, look, the Lord just blessed us all. Um, when people bought something to share, I, I was really blown away. It was the generosity of ev everyone to share with each other was lovely mm. and they really wanted to be together. You could tell yeah. as people come up the street oh, this is a great idea, and we, we haven't got together. We, we haven't spoken to one mm. another. It was at the stage where you were allowed to. Mm. So it was an absolute blessing yeah. to be able to invite people into a space without any 
no ties to it at all. The mm. kids were having fun. The parents, they came at four. I think they were enjoying themselves because they left at nine. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, I really think the children need to go to bed. <laughs> and, um, but look, it, it was a blessing mm. and, and something else has come out of it. Like a, a neighbour run not so long ago, a car had broken down and do you mind if you take my kids to Madeliza High School? Well, so do you know, you never know, as you, you never, say. No, you never, you never know. know the role of effect of it. Um, no, we all right. open our doors to each other, a lot of people I've been good enough to go to a number of people's homes here. Yeah. Um, and I know how welcoming that can be. So, yeah, no, that's thank about it. Thank <laughs> you. Look, I, I, and thanks to the shop for providing for that too. And I think George, who's been very oh, that's generous, yeah, the other um, thing that I brought mentioned last things time. as well. Yeah, yeah, George is very private. Uh, those yeah. who know George from the op shop. And he was in the yard looking over. So I just run down the drive, I said, now look here, George, <laughs> come over and say hello, because yeah. he likes to keep to himself. Mm. And I said, we'd love to just get other people to get to know you. I know mm. you know some, but you don't know everyone. So, of course, George says, I won't be a minute. And those who know him, he gets these trays of chocolates, the little, little chocolates. Right. And so he came back and gave it out. He, I think he looked at how many adult heads were there and he gave out these trays of chocolates and then he stayed for quite a while. Wow. So that was unusual because yeah. he does keep to himself. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm really blessed with my neighbourhood even though there's quite a few with issues. Mm. Um, but we've all got issues. I've got we issues. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but it was a blessing. It no, was that's a really blessing good. and I'm really pleased that we made the, made the effort. No, yeah. th thank yeah. you. It, yeah. it, because I, I loved it because it, it, in the base of it's a, it's a simple idea. Mm. Then people just bring, knowing that well maybe no one will come, but we'll just have a day anyway. Mm -hmm. And it and it did. It became just a beautiful blessing of people gathering out of their caves out of COVID and and meeting people that they'd wave to or look at as they drive past, but not really knowing. So thank you because you don't know then without any pressure what actually happens as the years roll by with those conversations. Just going to pray for you, Bev. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Lord, I want to thank you because. You see what needs to happen here. So I thank you, Lord, that you blessed that day. I thank you that you brought neighbours together. I thank you that you introduced people who'd been strangers. And I thank you, Lord, that from Bev, we can just hear um, that incredible enthusiasm uh, for what begins to occur when you sow fresh seeds. So Lord, bless those that receive for the same. Let them grow. And Lord, be with all of us who have tables and driveways that we might find creative and easy ways of finding ourselves blessed as we also bless others in jesus name amen, amen. thank you bev thank you, thank you. <laughs> right. thanks oh uh, it was on a sunday yeah, yeah. afternoon um, yes yeah, so it was difficult to get to know with working people yeah um, and children going to school yeah um, what some sort of subjects were sort of things Um, we found the men got together and they all had different avenues. It sounds Australian, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, does, it does sound that way. I don't mean they left their wives behind. No, no. Uh, because we put the tables right down in the middle. So they didn't start going off into one side no, or the no. other, which was good. Yeah. I'd object to that, I'm sorry, Alan. I'd object to that. <laughs> um, uh, but no, they, the, the men were sharing um, things that they were doing, like, Work. you know, they're, they're altering homes and doing yep. stuff. And yeah. Some of the, the single women said, oh, you know, and I, I, whether they asked, mm. I can't hear the conversation, whether they were able to help someone with a little job. I know George helped a yep. lady two doors down from me mm. uh, with little jobs. So, That's good. you know, those sort of things do emerge. Mm. Um, Yep. I've got stools and things oh, from yeah, camping. Yeah. Yeah. And I, we, we asked them, to, we, on, on the things that if you want a comfy chair, if people have got a mm. back problem, well, they bring their own chair. So if you'd like yep. to bring your own chair and yeah. food to share, no, that's good. that was how it was worded. Oh, thank, yeah. thank you, Bev. Yeah. That's Thanks fantastic. Thank, thank you, Alan. Yeah. Thank you, Alan. That's great. Hey, so...
up the front, please. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Well, what, a, what an inspirational story that was. Fantastic, Bev. Yeah, it just <coughs> proves, doesn't it, that some of the most powerful outcomes come from simple ideas, and that was, uh, I think, in that story. Um, as I was walking to church this morning, jo John grabbed me and he said, uh, you're, you're on after, straight after Bev, you know, for the Bible reading. And uh, he then said, uh, and I'll just confirm what the reading was, because uh, sometimes I get that wrong. Um, and uh, after confirming it, he said, feel free to say a few words if you want to about the reading before you read from the Bible. And I said, okay. So um, this, this reading um, to me is Psalm 23. So this, this reading to me is probably the most familiar, I would guess, if you ran a survey of the Christian world and the non-Christian world, it's probably the most familiar uh, uh, passage in the Bible, I guess. Um, during lockdown, Louise and I watched um, Songs of Praise a few times and they have the most uh, popular him, you know, a competition, and, and uh, it's a really good watch. You, see it, you can see it on YouTube if you want it. So this is not necessarily the most popular verse or passage in the Bible, but it's probably, I'm guessing, the, one of the most familiar. And it just occurs to me that when you hear uh, passages time and time again, sometimes you miss the point, or we all miss the point. We actually miss the point of what it's actually saying. And for me, um, the, and I often do this, you know, when I'm, I hear Psalm 23, I just sort of th hear the words and hear the phrases and I don't quite necessarily understand some of the phrases. Um, but uh, for me, the, the, the main theme that comes out of, out of Psalm 23 is about restoration. Restoration of what you say? Well, for me, it's about restoration of the soul. Mm. Um, I can well remember my dear mum uh, saying, you know, I used to say to her sometimes, how are you feeling, Mum? And she'd say, oh, I feel like the wreck of the Hesperus. You know, and, and she... And, 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 and I remember uh, yeah. Louise's dad used to say, I used to say how, are you, how are you going, Well, And he'd say, oh, I feel like a piece of chewed string. Well, that's, that, <laughs> that's about... So, so that's, they're, they're the times where you feel in your life you need some restoration, restoration of the soul. So to me, that's what this is about. So yeah. here we go. In, uh, so lis listen for that theme. So Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall want for nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear evil for you are with me and your rod and your staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And you've poured oil on my head and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. Amen. Thank you, Mark. You kind of uh, just wanted to sink in for a while. And I know it's a, it's a reading here we probably have quite often, uh, certainly during COVID, part of studies and a few other things. Um, but I, I love it, and for all the reasons, Mark, um, funeral services probably gets used along with John 14. In my father's house, there are many rooms. There's something about the comfort of it. But I've often said it, the pity of it is it's actually for all of life. It's not just for a funeral service. It actually covers the everything. And I really wanted it to be the, the launch for this particular series because it, it mentions that table, a, a table that's set in the presence of my enemies. And then I'm going to give you just a moment's um, quiet to think about maybe your favourite table. So walk backwards in your mind a little bit think of mm, what's my favorite table if i could go back to that table again where would it be who would it be with and why would you go there 
what's important about it. Let's take a moment of table that you would love to go back to if you spend a bit of time reflecting on those and then move a bit further with Psalm 23. So as soon as you have an image in your mind, I'm just going to get another microphone, this one's going in and out a bit, so thanks Ray. Thanks, Ray. Is this one on now, or is it? Um, I think we should be excellent. Thanks, thanks, Ray. Thanks for looking after that. That's fantastic. Are there any images of tables that have stirred up in your thinking while you've just had that moment to reflect and walk backwards through those passages of your mind, those passageways? Yeah. What table would it be? Your dinner table. Yeah. 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 So after, it's like so after all the work, all the preparation, it's now everyone is th is there. You're pausing, ready to enjoy a lovely meal, giving thanks. And you, I guess when you do that, you can look around and see all the little faces uh, over all those years around that beautiful table. Has anybody else got a table they've walked backwards to in their mind? Ellen. Christmas Day. Yeah, the Christmas Day tables. Yeah. Yeah, that day. That's really beautiful. Are they different tables over the years? It was a. It was a just the nature of Christmas Day itself. Just the nature of Christmas Day. It's a bit of a of a gift, isn't it? Christmas Day. When you think back over the people who've shared with you over the years, from grandparents and those dim dark years and the new little faces of grandchildren and others who are there now really really important any other tables that people can walk backwards to and think of mark how many else, how many other people just a quick show of hands had lemon x tables <laughs> 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 The unity of the table, yeah, 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 all in. So look, just think about those tables and let them be a bit of a guide over the next few weeks as we keep exploring the tables of the Lord of the Kingdom. Tables are important places. They're not always full of the greatest food. Sometimes they've been lean years or hard years. It was the throw together lunch because it's all you could find in the back of the cupboard somewhere. Or you had those awkward meals with maybe the people you didn't know how you'd get on with them but somehow you sort of found your way. Or those meals when no one feels like eating, you know, when someone's passed away and you kind of arrive there and all the food tastes different. It's harder to digest, all the flavours kind of gone and it takes a while for those tables to re-emerge. There's something about the hospitality that God brings to a table that changes almost everything. And if you go back through scripture, there are a lot of different table settings you know, the time when the three angels turn up to Abraham and Abraham thinks here's a great time for hospitality and the opportunity of what God might bring from that so when I come to this psalm th there are a number of very powerful things about it one is that um, if if you look at the life of David King David and stretch it out you realize that um, it is a really awkward life uh, often we only ever look at the praiseworthy areas of David's life and what it was like and defeating Goliath and, and those kinds of things. But there's a, there's a whole flip side in David's life as well. The period of time when the, the uprising that was keen to take your life was led by your own son. That'd be hard. That'd be a hard time when you've had to leave everything you have built over the years and know that your son hates you, that you have to clear out and that go back to being an older person now hiding in the wilderness in fear of what your son is doing in revolt. And then to know, oh, why is my son revolting against me? Because my parenting was so terrible that in the rape of Tamar, I did nothing. 
and I said nothing. And Absalom's hatred grew because I may have been the king, but I failed the vulnerable member of my family, Tamar. And what it is to be pursued by the one who's been a friend because his father now hates you, Saul and Jonathan. How hard it is to love and to know that there are people who are still conniving against you. So I think about that in this psalm. This, this is the psalm of a long life. It's the psalm of a hard life. It's a psalm of a blessed life, a psalm of a difficult life, a psalm that's had lots of, uh, sorry, a life that's had lot, lots of light and shadow and twists and turns but a very important life. And so as it begins to unfold, it starts with the happier days. Um, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me lie down. It begins with the celebration words. It's like God in the third person. He, the Lord, the shepherd. It's like, you know, those happy days you might have when it's easy to say, gee, God is really good to me. Look at this, that's amazing. I thought I had nothing and yet Christmas was wonderful. Ah, the Lord is my, he, he is my shepherd. But then when the shadows roll in and the hard days are there, you need something else. And so this psalm goes to you. It's really personal. Not just the God who's the shepherd out there giving me a bit of guidance and letting me beside a nice quiet stream, but the Lord who was with me in the depth of that the depths of that cave the Lord who sat with me and brought new words of life when I had nothing the Lord who took my hand and led me you 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 prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows there's a great encouragement in this around the the personalized faith the seeing of God as your closest friend, the friend who knows you more than anyone, the way that Jesus sees you on the bright sunny days, the days of success, and sits with you on the days of tears when you can hardly get out of bed in the morning thinking, I'm so ashamed. How could, how could I have even thought that? How could I have done that? How could this happen in my family? The you, the personalised you nature of God. I thought about the Lord preparing a table before us and we'll be coming to communion shortly and this, and this table. What are some of the things that, um, John, I'm thinking about your table, uh, people are gathering, what are the things that you like to have on your table to make it special? Are there things that, that you have in your home that you think, oh, when I'm having people around, this is what I like to have on the table? No, when you're moving all the, the junk mail and the, and the newspapers off onto the floor somewhere and finally putting away all the things back in the cupboard so there's a little square centimetre of clear table somewhere. Or is that just my home? <laughs> I don't know. No. So do you have any special things on your tables that you like to have on your table that says, ah, oh, now it feels like this is dinner? I'm going to show you something from, sorry? Flowers. Flowers, Flowers are good. I brought this little thing in. Ta-da! This, um, well, this is a salt and pepper shaker and it's um, fetchingly made in Japan and it was on my uh, grandparents' table often, um, whether we're using salt or pepper, pepper or not, it was just there. When my father passed away and we're going through all of his things working about working out who would, who would take what, that does happen, um, I found that in the end I only wanted a couple of things and that was... That was one of them and I think there was an egg cup and that was it. I was quite happy with those because I realised that uh, things like this that are on a table become like a portal. It's a strange word. Um, they stir up memories about the past. So for me to see that, it means nothing to you. This is a beautiful thing. You're thinking op shop probably, Wendy. I think I could get 20 cents for that if I'm lucky. Um, but I see this and it reminds me of the people at the tables that I sat with when I was little and the memories of those people who are now gone. But somehow when I see this, I can recall their laughter. I can think about the almond trees my grandfather had at the back. I can think about cows and horses. I can think about a lot of things just because this holds a little tiny memory. Just like when Psalm 23 is read, whether people are churchy or not, there's something held in that psalm that brings a whole new world with it. And I think that's why it's endured 
for so long and in so many places. When I'm asked to take services for people I've never met, knowing that there's hard, and people will say, oh, there's not many churchy people here. You know, and I think, oh, that's okay. I love non-churchy people. I can, I can cope well. But as soon as I read 23rd Psalm, it's like it pulls the whole room together. And people who don't even know the Lord, if you start singing Amazing Grace, it pulls the room together. There's something about that table that's set because of those words. It's, it's, a, it's a place that's prepared for you. For Chris and I, when we were expecting our first child, Matthew, who's now happily married and robust with two little kids, um, as we anticipated his birth, it uh, suddenly flipped and became really a little terrifying and, and, and uncertain. At around uh, 28 weeks or so of gestation, it was clear that Matt was not really growing or thriving and so Chris had to do some hospital time and give Matt some more sort of growing space and time from a placenta that really wasn't doing what it was meant to do. And so Matt uh, was born a little early, but not massively prem. He was just really small, like two and a half pound. And that's tiny. And so he, he spent um, just on three months at Essendon Hospital, as it was then, in a humidity crib for a lot of that time, being given small amounts, gavage feeding several times a day just to gradually mature him and grow him so he could come home. Three months is a long time. It's a, re it's a really long time to have a child who's in hospital and also in a humidity crib at a period of time when you weren't really encouraged to take them out. And so a lot of contact time with Matthew was just, you know, putting your hands through the little uh, little glove things on the side and it'd come out occasionally and if the nurses were, were over generous with that, the specialist would say, no, he shouldn't, shouldn't be out. So we had this, it was a big period of time. Chris would often go and spend her day there with Matthew. I'd be working and then after work, I'd drive to the hospital and would catch up and spend time with Matt. And one of the things that emerged in that time was to go to a little tiny cafe and uh, it's where I love, where I formed my love of Victoria coffee, I think, just because of the associations of that time. I'd get there, I'd order a coffee, always made beautifully well, and, uh, and a, a jam donut. Uh, and even now, I've realised that if I have a hard day, I, I'm immediately thinking, I just need a coffee and a jam donut, and everything will go well. Um, that became a table of recovery for Chris and I. It became the place we would go to, the coffee was always good, we could just catch and catch up and have like a bit of a, a, a table away from the table at home, just to, just to regroup and see what was going on and what we were doing. So in preparing for this, I thought um, that table in that cafe became a recovery place in a difficult time for me, that became a recovery place. The little photo I've got up here is uh, of a farmer, a, a coffee farmer in Indonesia. And I only spent an afternoon with him when I was in Indonesia back in uh, 2014. He, uh, he and his wife run this plantation. They're actually quite wealthy, but they invest in the community around them. So they live pretty lean. And uh, in that conversation, I had a friend of mine, Harry, there doing interpretation. He said, oh, um, we should talk about his son. His son had been missing for over 20 years and he had no idea whether he was alive still or what had happened. Um, but every day he um, looks out of his doors and windows and thinks maybe this is the day when my son will come back. It's such a prodigal story and at that little table, this simple little table, uh, that became a place where the gospel was retold. The, the yearning of God for the one who's lost. Uh, this man who has a, a very robust faith but only a new Christian and there's something about his longing for his son that the Lord had actually, uh, I'm not saying had caused it, but had used to help, to help his sense of uh, this is why I pray because I know my father in heaven also loves my son. Also loves my son. So for a long time, he gave me a, 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 a huge amount, I'm not sure how I got it through customs now, but it was no problem, gave me a huge amount of coffee from his plantation. It was in a huge jar in my fridge until it all went, but I took that photo and had it plastered on the side of it. So every time I'd open the fridge, it was, John, remember to pray for that farmer and for his son and to give thanks that God brings hope even when it seems hopeless. And I've thought about 
that farmer and that photo today in Psalm 23. The Lord has prepared a table for me. Even in the presence of my enemies, that farmer's enemies were fear, anxiety, anticipated loss. I might never see my son again. But the Lord continued to meet him and encourage him where he was. So it's a deep psalm. And as we journey over these next few weeks, we'll talk a bit more about the tables, the sacred nature of a table. It's much more than just a place to put a bit of food on. It's a place that can be a, tra a transforming space. Even a driveway can be a transformative space for God to do new things that were unimagined before. So now we come to this communion. We could all give communion talks. We've probably a number of us have heard them or given them over the years. Uh, every time I think they're kind of fresh because the grace of God needs to be fresh in our lives each day as well. We live in a world that is tossing and turning. It's beautiful and it's strange. It's full of light and it's full of shadow. And we really need to be the people who are being nourished and nurtured from the word of God, the hand of God, the living spirit of God, the Holy Spirit within us. Otherwise, we'll just be full of the old memories and the old ways and not finding where the, the new living waters are. So I think about this communion a bit like the salt and pepper. They become a portal. They remind me of the everybody else I've shared communion with, including that farmer I mentioned before. They remind me of the people of incredible faith who nurtured me when I was an idiot and didn't want to be in church in any shape or form, but somehow could still get to the communion rail in the Anglican church. And somehow the legacy of the faithfulness of those prayers have lasted in my life. So as you take uh, the bread and the cup today, uh, let it speak to you of God's hope, of God's forgiveness, God's reconciliation through the life, through the sacrifice, through the work of that cross, through the words of Jesus, fresh and new every day. Let's just pause and pray. Lord God, we want to thank you for the many tables in our lives that have brought us hope and friendship. But we think of the table that you set, the table that you had arranged in that upper room, the table with all the elements of Passover that signify your word for new life, your taking captives and setting them free, bringing people from slavery into a new kind of promise. So Lord, let all of these things speak to us because there is still slavery in the world, real, physical slavery, spiritual slavery. There is so much light and also so much darkness. And so we thank you, Lord, that you have set a table for us. You took bread and you broke it, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Your body given for us in hope for future. To break the old things of the past. And then you took the cup, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, the new promise, the new way that is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. We thank you, Lord, that this meal transforms. We thank you, Lord, that there is new hope because of it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord, for renewal and for blessing. We pray for strength. We pray for vision and we pray for focus. In your name, amen.